Eight Limbs Us is sponsored by Nakmoy Nation and Onyx MMA in Singapore. Um, and this is just working with Dang at Lana Muay Thai up in Chiang Mai. I was at Lana Muay Thai for two and a half years. Um, and Dang is a great trainer. He's very fight oriented. Um, he was my corner in my fight the night before. So here he's working with me on some stuff that he noticed in the fight. And this is a version of the long guard. And we call it the Dracula guard because it involves the elbow coming forward to block the chin. So it's very, very tight. You'll see him making adjustments as we're working right now. He wants me to jab at the same time that I'm blocking. So it's not a passive guard. It's an active guard. So here the jab is coming. And here he wants the palm up and out on the outside of my face. And I'm not doing it quite the way he does it yet. My elbow should be in front of my chin, like uh, Dracula holding his cape. That's why we call it that. There. Dracula. See how tight he tucks his chin down? So you're fully guarded on, on all sides in every direction on that guard. And he wants you to be like planted on your feet. So you're, you're really solid on the ground. Look at the angle of him tucking his chin down when he demos it. And then see you can attack out of it. That's what he's working with me on here. So jab same time and have the block up. So I'm blocking his jab at the same time I'm jabbing. Or whatever he decides to throw at me, honestly. Dang is a brilliant trainer. He'll show you something and then he'll drill it, but he'll keep increasing the difficulties and pressure that goes with it. So he wants you to stay close. This guard allows you to stay close instead of having to hop out. And now he wants me to go into it from other positions. So here he wants me to kind of bend my leg more on that low kick. So he's just adding different combinations. He wants me to have loose shoulders and movement on that. His movement's really pretty. So there he wants me to have rhythm in my feet, <laughs> which everyone wants Sylvie to have, but I'm kind of more of a static fighter. But you just add things on top of it. So again, he showed me the combination and then he adds things to it so that you have to constantly adjust your comfort and have a little bit of pressure in it. My block is already getting better there, moving into it and out of it faster. See how my hand came all the way across and my elbow was forward? I wasn't doing that before, even when he was drilling it. So that teep was improvised and he just rolled with it. That's what good pad holders, you can kind of throw stuff in and they'll integrate it. And then he just kind of, he doesn't do like a at once diagnostic, it's just as you go. So as we're working together, he sees something that he can adjust and he adjusts it. So he wants me to have a quicker switch step and to throw my off arm more to get more torque on it. So there he's showing, uh, in Thai they say close your hip. So he wants me to turn my hip more and then use the shoulder to block, like that. I remember actually uh, two years ago when I was still at Lana, he was on my case about my um, left switch kick not being fast enough. <laughs> so <laughs> clearly something I need to work on. And there again, you can see he has these patterns, but it's not just the same four things over and over again. He'll throw them in to kind of give you the repetition, but not in a way that you're going to zone out on. So here's that combination he showed me. And you just kind of slowly wade in, but under pressure. There's a little bit of footwork. He wants me to change direction. So 
so he, he's throwing in teeps now because I teeped him before. He's totally seeing what I like to do and then working on it. He wants me to keep my arm out on the teep as part of a guard. That's just for someone trying to punch over it there. Um, some people throw that arm really hard, uh, which is why he's making a point of where he wants that arm. <laughs> so there, that, that guard is just being integrated again, and I'm not quite used to it yet, but there, because he keeps doing it, I know how to make the adjustment, like I can fix because I can feel it's not the same and it's clear what he's focusing on. Here he wants me to step harder on that elbow. Uh, if, if you have a Thai trainer and they're telling you gao gao, they want you to step. It means like take a step forward. Um, they'll tell you on kicks and elbows to be closer. So see, he just, as he walks towards me with his mitts up, that just gives me enough pressure that I can respond to it. And then he sees what I do and whether or not it needs to be adjusted. <laughs> Putting the pressure on for that guard. See, it's a little bit more comfortable. It's just not quite as... um tight and immediate as it needs to be, but he's putting it in context all the time, so that actually speeds up how quickly I'll be able to use it in real life. So here you're kind of um, parrying down the other arm and then elbowing over it. So you have to really, really step on that. There, see how he wants like a jump? And here there's a, there's a little bit of a burn going on because <laughs> this is like eight minute round. There, so he wants the block, even when I'm tired. Now the pressure here is because of the fatigue, but my guard is actually better. He just wants me to stay in. So here is attack block, attack block. All right, so here he's uh, showing more the attack out of the block. Look at how tucked he is with his chin. And he keeps his, his hand open. Uh, his right hand, you see, is open against the back of his head. Um, you'll see other ways of doing this is to, well, Diesel Noy grabs his own shoulder. But he's totally, look at the shape from his, his shoulders. There, I'm starting to get it there. He's saying that you can hurt someone's hand with your elbow straight in front if they if they punch into your elbow even through the glove and so the top of your head is open but if you get punched on the top of your crown it's not going to knock you out and even if you get a cut there it's not going to stop the fight so you'll see boxers too when they tuck their head they'll kind of take shots on the crown of their head and then he's totally able to attack out of it He's saying plant really hard, um, like have a good base so that you don't stumble back off of the punches from the impact, really. But it's kind of a forward movement, like you're kind of leaning into the punches a little bit. Um, so you don't want to be you don't want to be shrinking away from them. You actually want to be kind of leaning into them, and your guard is like 
get it. <laughs> and then you can attack right out of it. It's a forward pressure. And so here he's showing that as you move forward and you strike, then you use that extended arm to grab the back of the head. So that's how you come in. Guard, attack, and then grab the neck. You can see that after I need, I kind of fell off of him a little bit, so I had to secondarily grab the back of his head. You should be moving forward. And here we're asking him, because the top of your head is exposed, what about elbows? And he's like, they're so far away, you're gonna be able to see that elbow and you just lean out of the way. And then your extended arm is what keeps them there. He can't elbow from there because my arm is out. So you actually want to have your palm, like use the heel of your palm to stop him right on his shoulder or in his face. I'm using my fist. Um, if I put my hand up a little, see how his hand is up? You can catch someone with the, uh, with the heel of your hand there. Like I can't come in <laughs> and he's not even doing it hard. That's why it's a uh, long guard. Long. So even if I step over and come to his short side, he's protected. He's saying it's actually easier for the person doing this long guard to elbow out of it. Because again, if you're pressing forward, you just collapse that long arm and can elbow. I think it's very difficult for people um, as they're progressing in Muay Thai, you're either in offense mode or defense mode. But something like this is offense and defense at the same time, and it's why ties are just incredible. This, this push forward while you're protected allows you to be uh, aggressive in moving forward. Here he's showing all the things you can do once you get in close. So you're just trying to stay close. So um, he had yelled at me in my fight the night before because I would block and then not step forward for the attack. So I was kind of blocking and then putting my foot straight down where it had started instead of closing the distance. So there, you need to step forward off of that. It's the same thing of being protected and then eating space. Protect, eat space. He had told me to uh, step harder on my left kicks. So my opponent was in the ropes where he put me just now, and he's showing what I should have done, is you just block, come in, and just slam inside that space. See how he uses it when they have nowhere to go? He uses it to eat up the space, and then he can attack. And because my back's against the rope, I can't go anywhere. My only option is forward. So you can see him feeling with his left hand, how he kind of like shoots it out and then pulls it back. He has this great thing when he catches a kick, he kind of pulls it down like that. It's like, it totally sucks you into whatever he's about to hit you with. It's really effective. So I've been told different things on how to catch that teep. Uh, my trainer in Patia doesn't want me to use the top hand, um, but Dang likes it. So you kind of trap it the way you would trap a frisbee. Or you can just parry it off, but you have to move your body at the same time. Um, generally, you want your opponent's leg to go across their own body. So that's how he's deciding which direction to go. My right leg, he's going to sweep so that it goes across my body rather than out. That way you get your opponent's um, kind of blind side. As I parry, I need to be stepping harder in to close that distance. Again, it's when you block something, you eat the space. So here, he's catching the teep and pulling it to the side of his body where he's going to be attacking. So he's pulling it towards where he wants to be hitting me. So there, see, I pulled it to the wrong side of my body. He wants it to go to the left because I'm going to be hitting with my left.
and he's he's bigger than me so it's a little bit hard for me to pull but someone your own size you can rip them really hard they're trying to work the guard back in he's such a good teacher he's so good at just kind of like bringing back in things that you've been working on so it's a drill but it's not only that here he wants you to shrug your shoulders more, so my left shoulder needs to go up a little bit tighter. Uh, Master K always said no neck, like a turtle. So tuck your chin, pull your shoulders up. He's like, put it right in the face. So you can see that's what he taught me in the very first thing was it's a simultaneous jab. So my right arm across my face is protecting me from his jab and I'm stepping forward to jab him. So it keeps me from backing up or being static. I tuck my chin, see the curve on the back of my shoulders. So I'm, I'm meeting his coming in and then continuing forward, forcing him backwards. Ah, he's awesome. Dang's the best. <laughs>